In this video, we will be solving this question which says if Elmo had arrived at Coke machine on a Saturday, the drugstore across the street would have been open. This drugstore has a soda fountain that will sell you as much as Coke as you want at a price of 4 cents an ounce. The salesperson will take any combination of dimes and quarters in payment. Suppose that Elmo plans to spend all the money in his pocket on coke at the drugstore on Saturday. On the graph, use pencil or black ink to draw one or two of Elmo's indifference curves between quarters and dimes in his pocket. For simplicity, draw your graph as if Elmo's fractional quarters and fractional dimes are accepted at the corresponding fraction of their value. Describe these new indifference curves in words. Let's first see what all information is given in the question. Now, the price of coke is 4 cents an ounce. Also, the salesperson will take any combination of dimes and quarters in payment, which means there is no longer the restriction on combination, which was earlier there in the question, which said that the machine would only accept 2 quarters and 1 dime. Hence, that proportion is no longer to be maintained which means the good are no longer perfect complements. So this is not the case. Now if this is not the case then what kind of goods they are? Are they bad goods? Are they neutral goods? Are they perfect substitutes? For that see that Elmo wants to spend all of the money in his pocket and his only concern is to get as much coke as he can. Since now the, the fraction of quarters and fraction of dime are accepted by the shopkeeper which means we only have to manage some combination of quarters and dimes so that that combination yields to 4 cents. Thus he is only concerned that whatever there is in his pocket in terms of quarters and dimes that sum should sum up to 4 cents. And if he is concerned about the total then the goods are considered to be perfect substitutes. Now what do you mean by perfect substitutes? So two goods are perfect substitutes if the consumer is willing to substitute one good for the other at the constant rate. And the indifference curves are these parallel straight lines. Now notice one thing here, it is constant rate. The definition of the perfect substitute is concerned with the constant rate. We know that one dime is equal to 10 cents and one quarter is equal to 25 cents and he only has dimes and quarters in his pockets. So we are not going to consider any other denomination. Now if he wants to exchange a quarter in terms of dimes, so the rate at which he would be willing to substitute would be ratio of quarters to dimes. So we know that one quarter is equal to 25 cents and one dime is equal to 10 cents. So dividing that we get the ratio of 2.5 which means if Elmo wants one extra quarter with him then he needs to give up 2.5 of times or we can say that now one quarter is equal to 2.5 times. Now with this information let's draw the indifference curves. We have this graph where on the x-axis we have quarters and on the y-axis we have dimes. Now with all the information that goods are perfect substitutes, the constant rate is 2.5, we have quarters and dimes on the axis. Now how will you actually draw your indifference curve? So the general procedure for drawing the indifference curve is Suppose we are at a point of 2, 3 where we have 2 quarters and 3 dimes with us. Graphically that will lie here. Now what if Elmo wants to have one more quarter? In that case he would have the total of 3 quarters with him. But notice that in order to get Elmo back to the original indifference curve or the original level of satisfaction, think of how much we need to reduce the dimes with him. That is, if we want to increase the amount of quarters Elmo has by one quarter, then we have to take away some of the dimes with him so that he remains at the same indifference curve or the same satisfaction level. And how much will that reduction be? Here, we saw that one quarter is equal to 2.5 times. So, if we are increasing the quarters by one 
unit. Thus, we have to decrease the dimes by 2.5 units. That would be 3 minus 2.5 which is 0 0.5. Thus, his new situation would be at this point. Now, note that at both of these scenarios, that is, whether he is at 2 quarters and 3 dimes or he is at 3 quarters and 0 0.5 dimes, he would be able to buy the same amount of soft drinks. And if that is the case, then his satisfaction level be the same, will be same. Thus, these two points will be lying on same indifference curve. And as we know that the perfect substitutes have the indifference curve in the form of straight line. So now we have two points and we know that a unique line passes through the two points. Thus, joining and extending the line, your indifference curve will look like this. Where this black line is the indifference curve and it is passing through the point 2,3 and 3,0.5. Likewise, you can draw another indifference curve which is just parallel to this one. And your indifference curve will look like this. So these are your indifference curve for Elmo. Now the question also says describe these new indifference curve in words. The one way to describe them is that they are in straight line. But if I describe them like that, then any person would come say that the, are these your indifference curve or are these your indifference curve? Or is your indifference curve taking this shape? So for that we need to specify the slope of the indifference curve. Now what do you mean by that? So the technical word for the slope of indifference curve is marginal rate of substitution or MRS which measures the rate at which the consumer is just willing to substitute one good for the other. And or as I told you before, it measures the slope of indifference curve. So now we already figured out that the rate at which Elmo would be willing to substitute quarters for dimes is 2.5. That is his one quarter is equal to 2.5 times. Hence, if we want to describe the Elmo's indifference curve in words, then we say that they are line segments with a slope of minus 2.5. Here 2.5 is the exchange rate or we say which is the marginal rate of substitution. 